Right then, welcome to Happy Hungry Hibby. What I'm going to bring you this week is a much anticipated book review of the one and only Plant You, which I have been really looking forward to receiving. Now, Carly has actually sent me this through her agent. Unfortunately, it slightly got damaged in transit, but absolutely appreciate the consideration and the thought in, in sending me a copy really appreciated plant you is carly's brand you can go onto her social media on instagram facebook some fantastic videos i've just read through this completely and it is an absolute game changer i actually give this book a real solid 10 out of 10 for just being absolutely unique genuine innovative and also considerate of the planet and sustainability. This book has really gone on to leaps and bounds from her first book and I've absolutely loved the content and the chapters in considerably which I'm going to go through. Now just going back to Carly's actual first book which is the original Plant You, which came out a couple of years ago. I've actually done a cookbook review of this, so please do check that out. Really good. And I do come back to this from time to time. It's absolutely brilliant. So really do recommend for you to get this as well. Really good. But this is absolutely brilliant. So the title of this, it is Scrappy Cooking. And it's got 140 plant-based, zero waste, recipes and what is so good about this it is all about sustainability and using lot of food that you are tend to gonna throw away it's really informative i like the stats with you know looking at america and how the fda has got the stats with how much food we waste when it's not just america but it's, it's globally in particular in, in Western society, we do throw too much food away. And that's what my channel was all about. I have actually got other cookbooks which I've used, which are really all about this, you know, from whether it's a river cottage, you know, love your leftovers. I really do like Tom Hunt. He does an article in The Guardian, The Natural Cook, and Eating for Pleasure, People and Planet. Absolutely love it. I really do like how Carl has gone into this category i'm really really impressed with the layout of this book the quality of the book as well with the, the diagrams and the glossy pages carly's actually kept with the same format as she did with the previous book and really do love how it uses the, the the foods as a simple ingredient each recipe is one page method one page visuals and also do like how it just shows you what the finished article looks like. For me, that is really important. Going into the content of the book, really do like the visuals. Really sad to hear about Carly's uh, the passing of Carly's mum. I do know she was a, a very big part in supporting it, which is, which is said at the back, and it's really quite touching uh, Carly's sort of acknowledgements and tribute, you know, to to her family, in, in, you know, from her husband to her sister who's really helped her, and also her mum and her father here, and of course her cat, King Tut, <laughs> who features on her programme a lot and her, her videos. So yes, it's, it's really quite sad and um, really quite a nice touching um, review of, of, of this, you know, at the end. I do want to also thank, I don't know whether it's Wendy or Renny, I think, it, I do want to thank Wendy as well, her literary agent, who sent me this book. I know it just got damaged, but it, I'm, I can still use this. It's, it's really good. And also thank you for the nice little uh, acknowledgement here, which is an advanced copy of the cookbook by yours truly. Thank you, Carly. Right, so let's go into the contents of the book. The introduction is really interesting. I really do like her sections with pickling and fermenting as well, which is something new. So all in all, the contents, you it is broken down into 11 chapters. Chapter one is about 
scrappy sunrises. We always have to start off with breakfast. Chapter two is the scrappetizers and sides. Chapter three is your superb soups. Some absolutely brilliant ones here. I'm really looking forward to trying some of these. So there's 10 soups here. There's three of these which look absolutely amazing. Chapter four is your sustainable sammies, wraps and salads, as in sandwiches, wraps. Chapter five is your no waste noodles. Chapter six is the main bowl. Really do like this section. It's really, really Really easy and great to just have a nice summer salad bowl. Chapter seven, your eco entrees. Chapter eight, your sustainable sweets. The last three chapters are absolutely game changers for me. And it's chapter nine, the dressing, dips and saucy things. Chapter 10, sip and save, which is about drinks and how to not waste things like fruit skin and stuff like that. And chapter 11, last but not least, is preserves, powders, ferments, and other fun stuff, which is a whole lot of things here. Now, for me, these are the key things that make this recipe book because it's about making flavor bombs and things that you can do in advance to actually support with a lot of other recipes throughout the book. And that's something that I've covered with Otto Lenghi, his kind of recipe books where the simple cookbook and the flavor cookbook because it's about using innovative ingredients and if you can you can this part of the book is about not throwing the food and using the flavor and the textures of, of a food that foods that you would normally throw away to actually enhance the rest of the recipes so then we go into the introduction a bit of an insight into the book and a bit about carly herself and uh, king tucked here you can see and then we, we sort of go into the realms of what the book is about, the ethics, the solutions and things. And I really do love the brand of scrappy cooking because it's it's not pretentious. It's just about how you can conveniently make foods and recipes in the week for often very busy people, but at the same time, not throwing food away. The scrappy kitchen looks at some of the utensils that you can have to to help you with the, with the book. Looking at also beans, grains, starches, the cooking chart, really interesting. And I really do love this section. So although you've got an index at the back, you've actually got some of the core plants and it will show you the recipes. Absolutely love it. I've not really ever seen anything like this in a cookbook to this level. And, you know, so say for example, tomatoes, you've got, Lots of recipes here, which you can use, whether it be tabula or a casserole or scratch tomato sauce or, you know, a wrap, you know, absolutely brilliant. And then once we get in food introduction, we then enter the recipes. And this is where we enter the scrappy sunrises. This was very popular in her first book. Really do love these things for, for, for breakfast. A so common ground granola, your parfaits, your fruity parfaits. And this is something my wife loves doing, you know, especially the overnight oats, which she does for work for me. And it's just absolutely amazing. So I'm really looking forward to looking at these varieties here. This is something really good, especially I work in the baked industry, looking at real healthy, innovative baked products, very baked oatmeal. Definitely going to be trying this. This is the super CD granola bars. Looks absolutely amazing. What I do love about this book, it's brought me to a realization of the hidden versatility of peanut butter, which I'll get onto a bit later. But yes, you know, so brown banana muffins, death by chocolate flapjacks, and this, which I would probably think is an appetizer, but you can actually have this for breakfast. I really do love the fritzy fritters, and it's very, very popular looking at zucchini or what, you, what we call courgettes, courgette fritters and, and how to do different forms of them. So yes, I mean, there is so many recipes here, over 140 in total. Eggless omelets, look at that, brilliant. And then grab and glow burrito. I am really looking forward to doing this. This is a cultured vegan yogurt, but what I love about this is the actual combination of cashews, kafu and coconut milk. A little bit of, of natural sugar, but then using probiotic capsules. Really interesting. Really looking forward to trying that. I've actually done a vegan cafe, which you can check out. Really do look and love it doing these things. I've done also done a cashew butter cream, which is amazing. Actually covered this recipe from her first book, which actually used temper. Now in this book, Carly's actually used two other forms of that on how to save 
waste with banana skins, but then also mushrooms. So in this case, we, uh, Carl has used the King Oyster Mushrooms, which is absolutely brilliant. And you can use this, you can chop this up and actually use this to sprinkle on top of pastas and things, which is absolutely brilliant. Really, really good use of this. You no, know, just the juice for breakfast, really do, do like this. You know, just how to use things like cucumbers that you would often throw away, but it's just looking a bit aged. Don't throw it away, make, it, make a juice with celery and cucumber and then enhance that with some flavors then the smoothie bombs absolutely brilliant very similar to the, the to a first book on this it's really really good so then yes chapter two is the sides so we're looking at the fiesta fries we've got we got the beet chips crispy crunchies dill pickled chips really innovative really good i've never seen this before it's a flax wrap save the seeds cornmeal biscuits very popular in, in america this these kind of things sweet and spicy carrot showstoppers look at the rainbow all the different baby carrots there greek lemon smashed potatoes Really love the use of citrus and lemon in here, in particular the back on preserved lemons. A scrap of chia, which is using courgette, zucchini, red onions. Then we go on to chapter three, which is the soups. Whatever sheet pan soup, which uses the butternut squash. Really do love butternut squash. Green goddess soup, raid the fridge noodle soup, roasted tomato soup with crispy quinoa, leaky Tuscan minestrone. This also, would have thought this would, would have been at the back of the book, but it's actually in with the soups and it's actually the cobby chick and broth. Absolute game changer. This is how you make the broths in advance to be able to help you make some of the soups, which I'm really, really interested in. Surprisingly, she's not put any of the nutritional yeast in there, but the celery salt there is the absolute is the flavour which which brings out that sort of chicken flavour with the garlic powder. Turmeric brings the colour, obviously, really do love that. And the combination of herbs, but it's the corn cob, which is the one, the vegetable you're saving here. And then that goes on to show you how to make a corn chowder, smoky corn cob chowder. And then this, absolutely love French onion soup, this caramelised French onion soup. Looking forward to doing this. Oh, dilly orzo soup, scrappy broth. And then we go on to chapter four, sustainability sammies, wraps and salads. Really love this. This is often you throw away the leaves for the celery, the celery leaf tabula. Absolutely incredible. Also like the, the, the tuna, how to make a tuna sandwich. My wife loves tuna, often the prep tuna she will. So I look forward to trying this, which is the white bean tuna sandwich. Grilled romaine salad. And then we come on to the no waste noodles. Absolutely brilliant. Look at that hot pink pasta using beetroots. Whole darn squash pasta. One pan orzo casserole. This also is absolutely brilliant. This is how to make an instant mac and cheese powder. Definitely going to be trying this. And you can make this in advance and then basically make this in the week with just the powder you've made in advance. Absolutely brilliant. Green with Envy spaghetti, Sunday sauce. Really do love Papadel pasta. I've done quite a few recipes of this myself. Very similar, but with the use of walnuts and lentils. Brilliant, almost like the, a, a ragu in a way. So scratch, tomato sauce, lemon peel pesto. Then we go on to the main bowls. So this is the bowls we're talking about. Lots of real colorful rainbow salads and bowls. And then chapter seven, eco entries. Firecracker tofu with coconut rice. Zucchini falafel fritters. Any vegetable curry, totally unpretentious. You know, it's just whatever veg you've got, Throw it in with, with and make you, you, your curry. Absolutely brilliant. Perfect peanut butter curry. Again, use of peanut butter. Palak paneer. Golden immunity stew. Spice eggplant and white bean stew. What a doll. Love doll. And some of these recipes as well were just from all over the world. I mean, look at this. Jackfruit boogie non. Really looking forward to trying that. So innovative. Stuff cabbage. Dumplings, can't miss miso cabbage steaks. I said it right. Bang bang broccolicious steaks. Whole roasted cauliflower. Look at that for innovative. Celeriac corned beef sandwich. Wow. Plant you pizza party. And this is also very, very innovative in terms of a vegan ground beef, allergy friendly. 
Look at that, absolutely brilliant. Something I've not really done. Looking forward to doing that. Vegan sticky ribs and seitan chicken. Pickled Tennessee tenders. Oh, it goes on. Veggie masala burgers. Soy free tofu. And then we get on to chapter eight, which is sustainable sweets. I don't, don't really have much of a sweet tooth. Really do love some of these ideas. Wacky cake, a scrappy cookie, a hot chocolate co cookies, not picky fruit crisp, leftover quinoa truffles, chickpea blondies, mushy berry jam, candied citrus pills this is something carly covered on her social media platform which was a very very popular video so do check that out berry fruit leather i've, I've, I've made a variation of this myself it's absolutely brilliant i've done one with using the plums in the garden so i'm looking forward to to doing this using chia seeds which would be a really good idea and then oh sticky date pudding my wife's favorite mousse on the loose using aquafaba and chocolate the cream of tartar so simple and then we get onto the game changer which is for me chapter nine dressings dips and sauces so here you've got all these things that you can make in advance sunflower cream sauce carrot top chimichurri scrappy pesto mango peanut sauce roasted pepper sauce vegan tzatziki can't miss a page it's just absolutely brilliant tahini dressing your creamy hummus caesar vinaigrettes your green goddess dressing luscious lemon dressing the whole can hummus whipped feta dip oh absolutely i've, I've done something similar to this from otterling this is a kale asparagus and adami spread tofu feta this is not another game changer. It just tells you how to make your own balsamic glaze, which is just re a re reduction. And then your vegan nutty palm. Reminds me this of Dr. Michael Greger, actually. He's done a lot of these things in his books, which enhance the food, the flavors. Then you've got on to chapter 11, which is sip and save. So this is completely new to me. I've never really heard of using peanut butter in your coffee or even your hot chocolate. So I've got one here, the peanut peanut butter jar latte. Absolutely brilliant. Really innovative. Also, yeah, rose water, just making your own rose water. You can actually do this also with hibiscus, which is fantastic. You can also use this in vinegar, making a rose vinegar or hibiscus vinegar. And then we go on to the, making that like a latte using the, the rose water. This is something I've never heard of before, and it's absolutely fantastic. I really can't wait to do this. I've got a load of dates in the cupboard of different varieties, which I use a lot of. I've actually made a date, so which is great. But I did not know you could actually make your own coffee just from using the seeds. It would be caffeine-free, obviously. So easy, so simple. So looking forward to, to trying that. And then we go on to pineapple skin tea, and this is something I've covered which is the Tangi Tapachi, which is a fermented Mexican drink. I've actually done this with pineapple and I've actually also done it with banana skins as well. Really good. And this is what this book is all about. Absolutely love it. Ginger Turmeric Community Shots. I do actually buy this from, from the shop. It just shows you how to make this yourself. Then it just shows you how to, you know, some nice summer coolers, ginger ale, this. Really interesting, again, the use of peanut butter in making your own milk. How simple, just by adding nut butter to water and then adding different flavors. Never done it before, never thought of it. And then of course, actually making your own milk, something I've not done. And as you can see here, I'm constantly buying these plenish, which is the organic oat and almonds. Really good, but I really do want to try and make it myself because it is not cheap. And then. The last chapter, which is preserves, powders, ferments, and other fun stuff. Sourdough, not actually made sourdough yet. I do actually have my own water cafe, which I make, which I've done a video for. Do love this kind of thing. Do love fermented foods. And then you've got the small sourdough loaf, sourdough discard crackers, homemade vanilla extract, perfect preserved lemons. I do do this with limes. Absolute game changer. Great for Middle Eastern Mediterranean cuisine and um, you can ferment these and, and you do some wonderful things with it as Carly's demonstrated in this book. Sun-dried tomatoes, how to do that yourself. The most popular video that I've done is actually how to dehydrate fruit and herbs and vegetables in your in my, in my Ninja air fryer. Really, really good. Herb breadcrumbs and then your citrus peel powder. You've basically done what you've done before, but then blitz it, 
Same with tomato powder. I've done this myself and I've actually done it with the plum skins in the garden, which you can see, I've done a video of that. Similar sort of principle, absolutely brilliant. Again, your beet powder, your pomegranate peel powder, onion peel powder, bouillant, bouillon powder, lentil sprouts. Really didn't know you, you could do this. And then your turmeric sauerkraut, your spicy pickled red onions. I've done something, I've, I've done an Ottolenghi recipe of this, which is with hibiscus, which is great, but I've not ever seen this with, with jalapeno and black peppers. Really Really good. And then the use of apple cider vinegar, brilliant. Just some nice pickles to finish with, with the cucumber and then your watermelon spears. And then last but not least, you've got your vinegar. And I've actually just covered a cookbook review of the vinegar cupboard, an unsung hero in the kitchen. Strawberry top vine vinegar, just using strawberry tops. And then apple scrap vinegar. That's really how to make vinegar properly. And then we end with some, just some ideas on how to use your freezer with scraps and then the acknowledgements, of course. So all in all, this is an essential book to get. I'm gonna cover a top five vegan, whole food, plant-based cookbook reviews of what my top five favorites are. And Carly's books will no doubt feature within that top five, which I'm looking forward to covering in the future. So really do hope you're enjoying the show. Please do subscribe and also turn on those notifications. Bing! Every fortnight on Tuesdays, at half past four. Also check out my playlist for cookbook reviews as well. Really hope you enjoyed this review. Thank you Carly and your team for sending this to me. It was really, really nice of you to do so and really do appreciate it. And I really do hope you all go and get your own copy because this is absolutely brilliant. So take care everyone, stay healthy and don't throw food away. Enjoy. And I would also like to introduce you to a new member of our family. Happy Harvey Hibby. He's just been and had a nice little sleep. He's absolutely adorable, isn't he? Mm -hmm. So it's a bye-bye from Harvey and a bye-bye from me. Take care, everyone.